And we're live. Uh, hi, I'm Phil Monahan, editor of the Orvis Fly Fishing Blog, and uh, I am joined uh, somewhat today by some of our e-log partners from around the country uh, to talk about what's happening with fly fishing season 2020. Um, from South Florida, we have Captain Jason Sullivan. From Northern Maine, we have Scott Story from Libby Camps. Uh, coming in and out due to technology, we have Wade Felon from Big Hole Lodge and Justin Hayes from the Lodge of Palisades Creek. Uh, so as they come in, we will uh, include them in the conversation. Uh, as, as you might imagine, fly fishing lodges aren't known for their uh, excellent connectivity. Um, so since he's got the best connection, let's start with uh, Captain Jason Sullivan. Uh, Jason, can you just uh, sort of introduce yourself and, and tell us where you fish? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm a full-time guy down in South Florida, uh, fish in Everglades National Park down in Flamingo. Um, been doing that for eight years. I've uh, been with Orvis for four years as an endorsed partner. Um, you know, so we fish down here for tarpon, snook, redfish year round, um, out of Flamingo. Uh, and I was lucky enough to fish with Jason in January. Um, and it was with Jason that I caught the first tarpon of my life. So that was exciting as yes. well as, <laughs> as well as plenty of snook. Um, what were the effects of the lockdown on your business? Uh, yeah. So, you know, for speaking for all guides down here in South Florida, our busiest season, March, April, May, June, you know, what's considered our tarpon season. Um, this is, this kind of hit us right, right on the cusp of the beginning of it in March. Um, so it, it took a, it, it's, it's been a huge hit on, you know, all the guides, you know, just speaking for South Florida, and Florida Keys, it just took a it took a huge hit on everybody as we make our bulk income for the year during these months, um, you know. And now as we're kind of moving into our summer, when it's typically gets a little bit slower for business, when we you know move into July and August, and not having that, you know that 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 bulk season to kind of push you through the, the slower months, it's definitely been, um, it's definitely been a tough year so far. So are you fishing now? Yeah, they just, they just, you know, South Florida, the Tri-County area where we're at, um, Palm Beach, Broward County, Miami-Dade County got hit the hardest as far as cases go in Florida. So that's been the slowest to open back up. Um, a lot of things have started to open up already. Um, they opened up Flamingo where I fish out of a couple weeks ago, early May. Um, so that's been good. Uh, they, um, they open up the Florida Keys starting on Monday, June 1st, which is, I know is going to be a huge help for the guides down there as they've been closed for, for a couple months now. Um, so yeah, we're trying to somewhat get back to normal. You know, I have been doing some fishing, so that's good. I've had some local, uh, you know, anglers with me. So that's, you know, it's been kind of pushing me through personally. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, you know, as we keep moving into the summer, things will start to somewhat open up and get back to, you know, somewhat of a normal. What, uh, what percentage of your clients would you say come from out of state? Uh, this time of year, probably 60% typically, you know, for March, April, and May, I would say. Yeah. And, and how many of those do you think are going to make it? Well, um, I've, I've been lucky enough to, for some of them that have canceled that obviously couldn't travel, pushing them off to, uh, you know, other summer, later summer and early fall. Um, so that, that's helped. Uh, and I would say probably maybe 10% of the you know, guests that I was supposed to have in the, you know, springtime that were tra traveling came down and fished with me. Uh, well, I mean, it's good that you had some business. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Next up, we have uh, Scott Story, who is the operations manager for Libby Camps, which is located in northern Maine. 
uh, full disclosure, I was supposed to be at Libby Camps right now, as a matter of fact. Um, Scott, can you tell us uh, what the lockdown effect has been for you and what your current state is? Sure. Well, thanks for having us, Phil. And first of all, we'd have had you here. You'd have to stay for 14 days in Maine, according to the law. And we'd have been more than happy to put you up for that period. But I think uh, my wife, my wife would said, have a problem. You know, <laughs> yeah, I left home here a couple of weeks ago, told her I'd be back in uh, the end of October. She says I'm easy to love from a couple hundred miles away. But uh, anyway, uh you know, we're doing the best we can here. Uh, I'm very fortunate, first of all, uh, to be here. The Libby family have entrusted me to, to, to work here and uh, help them get things going. We've had a lot of adversity here uh, right out of the gates this spring. Uh, as you know, obviously, the lockdown. We had a, boy, we had an explosion, a gas explosion here last week and uh, lost about half of our lodge. We've been spending the last two or three days getting things cleaned up and getting ready to go away. We're going to be able to open. It's not an issue. Uh, fortunately, the part of the lodge we lost was mostly storage and uh, some utility stuff. But, you know, all, all that said, we've got a fantastic crew here. And uh, Matt apologizes he couldn't be here tonight. And part of all that that we're dealing with, he's having to make runs into town and dealing with getting materials so we can be uh, – we, we've got guests coming Sunday night. But uh, more on point with the lockdown, we uh, – you know, we're very fortunate, Matt, early on, uh, came to the conclusion that although we're going to lose a lot of our out-of-state uh, business, people that, that come from away to, to come on up and enjoy our trout and salmon fishing, we also have a lot of people that are in Maine that would normally go to some of your other locations that, uh, you know, Jason, Wade, Justin, that, that might come to your place. And so we've been doing some marketing. Our, our, uh, our, our marketing manager, Ben, uh, Rue, uh, and, and Matt have been marketing hard to let people know that, uh, you know, we've got a great place right in your own backyard. So that's helped us out with that 14-day that quarantine that people were, were looking at to, to actually come up here. We're actually, we've got a lot of bookings in June. Again, residents, uh, we're, we're opening the doors Sunday. We, we could have actually opened a few days back, but we want to be ready. And we've got a lot of precautions that we have to take, some procedures so that we're staying safe and providing people with a safe environment. But uh, all that said, it, it took a little bit of time. And we are opening the doors Sunday. It's going to be fishing as usual. Uh, Matt and I have been out with the airplane looking at some of our fishing locations. And uh, the water's looking great. We're, we're ready to rock and roll. We're we're uh, just waiting for the guest. Our biggest concern, obviously, is how long that 14-day quarantine procedure stays in place. As long as uh, they lift that up, as we get closer to the end of the summer, end of fall, we should be okay. Uh, if they don't, that's going to create some issues for us. We have, uh, you know, we have a lot of bird hunters, Phil, as you know, that come from out of state. That's uh, probably 90% of our clientele towards the end of the summer, end of the fall. And uh, so we're, we are looking at that with a lot of concern. Uh, we're very hopeful that this, this thing is going to subside enough so that we can uh, get back to business as usual. But in the meantime, you know what? We've got a great crew here at Libby Camps. Uh, I'm proud of everybody that's here. We're working hard. We're going to make it happen one way or another. And uh, we've been a hundred and some odd years, they tell me, here at Libby Camps before I got here. And uh, I'll be damned if I'm going to be the new general manager and let it go to hell in my watch. <laughs> do you uh, do you have any um, idea from the governor of of whether or not that fourteen day quarantine is going to be lifted soon? I, I suspect we're going to live with it through the month of June. Uh, there is a lot of pressure because understand that in Maine we have a whole coastline that's full of summer tourism with lobster and uh, lobster bakes, clam bakes, and uh, hotels, motels, I mean, you name it, the, that whole summer tourist season is a huge part of the main economy. And, uh, you know, I, I, not only is, is the governor's office getting pressure from outfits like us under, to understand what, what kind of an impact this has on us, there's a huge, huge lobby from the coast as well. As you know, Phil, you've been up here. 
the coast is a big part of Maine, and uh, uh, it that that has a huge impact on all of us. So I I suspect that as long as it it gets to a point where it's safe uh, and reasonably safe, we'll see that open back up. Uh, that's certainly what we're hoping for. Excellent, thanks, Scott. And in Montana, we've got Wade Felon, owner of Big Hole Lodge, and your governor, in fact, just did announce the lifting of a 14-day quarantine. Correct? They did. Yes, we um, we're hoping to lift the quarantine and move into phase two on June 1st. That's what the governor's directive. Um, has laid out and assuming there's not a jump in cases in the next week, we're, we're opening Monday. Um, we big hole lodge are not opening on Monday. However, uh, our business is a little bit unique in that we're, we're quite small. We take eight to 12 clients a week and, uh, try and book around eight per week. And my father who started the business in 1984, um, is in that vulnerable category. Uh, the governor's directive did say, if you're over the age of 65, uh, don't travel yet. So um, it's we're in a personal decision uh, scenario, and that's good. I think everybody is, we're all in this together, and everybody's doing their, their uh, best to make sure their lodges and guide trucks and boats um, are cleaner than ever, and we're following CDC guidelines, county guidelines, um, implementing our own guidelines to things like guides are the only ones who touch the flies and the tackle and, and handle the fish and release the fish. And um, all, all of our, our employees are in masks and uh, people get single serve salt and pepper shakers, these types of things. It's just a new world. But with all that being said, we've made the decision with Montana reopening. We're a state with uh, the second lowest number of cases in the in the nation, and really that's a result of shutting down our ski season and and not having anyone have traveled to Montana since uh, early March. So now the country is making a decision to reopen in a phased approach, and and Montana needs to do so in a way to where we don't have to shut back down. So I'm encouraging everyone traveling to Montana to please stay safe and healthy um, so that our employees and, and lodges and guides uh, can stay healthy and, and stay open this summer. We made the decision to open on June 21st, uh, about a week and a half prior to the governor's announcement, and we're sticking with that date. Um, I have some out-of-state employees that um, needed to come in and quarantine and some guides that you know, I couldn't answer how long is this going to last. So they took construction jobs or truck driving jobs or or left for other work. And I gave them the hard date of June 21st. And luckily, my staff is sticking with us and they're all going to be back, um, assuming it's safe to open. And when would you open in a normal year, Wade? Uh, first of May. We do a few day trips through April, but the lodge would have been open May 4th. Mm -hmm. And uh, joining us now after some technological dif difficulties is Justin Hayes, the general manager of the Lodge of Palisades Creek in Idaho. Can you hear us now, Justin? I can't hear you. Sorry about that, but I'm, I'm with you 100% now. No worries. So uh, the question that the other gentlemen have been answering is um, what has been the, the effect of the lockdown on your business? And where are you right now? All right. So we've, Idaho has been a little bit different than other states. Our governor has allowed for an exception for people that purchased a fishing or hunting trip before April 4th. We're allowed to come in during our quarantine, not isolate for 14 days and do the trip with the outfitter. We've been operating since May 1st. Uh, we've got eight guests this evening. Uh, we're down about 10% for May. Uh, we normally have a big group coming in uh, this time with some kids, uh, 501c3 that we work with. They canceled due to, uh, due to just concerns and coming from the Southeast. Other than that, um, we're, we are up and running. Uh, we have put some pretty strict protocols in place. Uh, around the first, honestly, 
that was met with a lot of pushback from our guests. Um, people didn't want to wear a mask in a boat. People did not want to follow the guide to the boat ramps. Uh, how we're handling it right now is communicating with people upon arrival. And I, with a smile and a mask on my face, approach our guests outside and, and welcome them and tell them that they're here, they're safe, and they can relax. And I usually offer a cocktail. I then ask, uh, what is your concern level from a scale from <laughs> one to five? Amen, brothers. Yeah, that's right. What's your concern level from a scale from one to five? One <laughs> means no concern. Five means you're concerned. Generally, three is the highest number we've received. And people say we're not terribly concerned about getting sick. But if it's possible, we just not like to not sit next to somebody at dinner. Fortunately, you know, we take we have room for 28 people here. We have decks off our dining room, breakfast areas to eat in the morning, dining rooms inside. We've got a lot of space here, so we're easily able to accommodate that request. We're also set up to, to bring uh, food to people's cabins, individual cabins. Uh, we've got 13 of them. So we've offered this. However, everybody, is, there's, everybody still wants the social experience they have had in the past when they come to a lodge. They just want to do it six feet apart. Um, yesterday, uh, again, I have, <laughs> this has come all the way down from a federal to a state, to a business, to a manager decision. In our case, I am allowing the guests and the staff, the guides to communicate and handle the situation they seem, they think is appropriate. It all comes down to communicating in the very first, uh, instance of meeting whether it's me in the dining room or the guide in the fly shop. Idaho has um, not a lot of cases, especially where we are in Eastern Idaho here. Jackson Hole has a little bit of a hot spot. Um, uh, Ketchum and Sun Valley got a little hot and they're heating back up. But where we are in the Eastern part of the state, there's still very few cases and none that we know of in Swan Valley, Idaho, where the lodge is located on the South Fork of the Snake River. So uh, we have been operating and we have been wearing masks. Last night, uh, the eight guests in the house said, if you are all comfortable as a staff, you do not have to wear your PPE. And we discussed it amongst ourselves and the staff said, I feel comfortable. So we allowed that to happen. Frankly, tomorrow night, we have some guests that have been concerned uh, to a level five. So we will wear our masks when we serve We'll glove up when we clear plates and serve dishes, changing those. We are every day still sanitizing with this peroxide, Viking kills all mask glasses. <laughs> we are uh, sanitizing all of our surfaces and restrooms, our door handles uh, twice a day. The rooms uh, are, are sanitized as well, all flat surfaces and handles and uh, bathing areas. We are triple sheeting our beds uh, and changing those sheets daily. We're still offering daytime service. Our housekeepers uh, have the option to wear PPE if they are concerned. Uh, and so we, that's how we are operating right now. It's day by day and it's guest by guest. Having done this now for you know the better part of three weeks, we're starting to feel more comfortable uh, with our situation and we feel like we can offer any guest the experience that they want and still have a good time. Mm -hmm. And like I say, we'll have, we have level fives here with level ones and we distance everybody and, uh, we don't congregate around the bar. We have people sit down and we bring drinks to them. Uh, our lunches are made in a controlled environment. Our lunch lady, uh, has been an EMT for 15 years. She's sensitive to sanitation and uh, we're feeling pretty strong about our program so far. You know, I've asked some of our guests to leave reviews on the uh, our Orbis page and they have done so. And, uh, you know, we continue to evolve with the with the scene here. Uh, Idaho is, is uh, pretty lax right now. The restaurants in our communities are, are not ppe -ing. The community members are not wearing masks for the most part. Indeed, our, our, you know, we, we saw a fluctuation in our reservations with our 75 plus year olds. 
and and that's okay we've offered to exchange push the trip give their money back whatever they want so that they come back next year fortunately the phone's been ringing off the hook we are sensing a lot of pent up demand and people want to get out of these urban areas and come to these rural areas uh, with the hope and expectation that they'll be safe and we consider our property a sanctuary i don't let we no longer let the public come into the dining rooms uh, we no longer, we limit how many people are in our fly shop for our staff and our guest protection. And we feel like it's going pretty good. What, uh, what percentage of your guests fly in? I would say 85% of our guests typically fly in. Uh, we've had, that has changed. We've got a lot of people driving in. They're either flying into Salt Lake and driving or they're driving from Colorado they're driving from Indiana. We've got a family from Bozeman, Montana here. Heard we were open and just wanted to get out and stretch their legs and get some fresh air. That is our concern going forward. And I'll be honest with you as well. We are seeing a lot of these fluctuations 10 days before arrival. People are so hopeful something's going to change. Something's going to happen. And maybe it'll be better, safer, easier. You know, we're begging for testing at the airlines. We don't see that happening anytime soon. So we we still remain cautiously optimistic, shall we say? And um, do you see your late summer reservations holding? We have a amazing July, August, and September on the books right now. Everything that was in May that we had uh, that that rescheduled pushed to July and August. We continue to see some of our late June and early Julys moving to August and September. So we're, we're, we're feeling pretty strong about the numbers we're seeing. And I got to tell you, even today, the phone was ringing pretty hard. Excellent. Yeah. Jason, Jason, you are, uh, un unlike these other lodge uh, environments, it's just you <clears> and the guests <throat> on the boat. Are you doing anything special on the boat? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, fortunate for myself, um, we don't have lodges to clean and all that stuff. Um, you know, so for, for me on the boat, you know, the, the handshaking that's gone away. Um, always wearing a buff. I wear that anyways. Most people wear buffs anyway. So, so that, that's, you know, we got the, the face and the nose covered. Um, and then I'm, I'm pulling the boat. So, you know, my anglers definitely 16 feet away from me. So as far as that goes, I kind of, you know, I tie all the stuff. I have all the, everything rigged and ready. Um, and then, you know, hand, hand the, uh, the angler, the rod, and that's really it. Everything gets sanitized and cleaned every night. Um, you know, so there's, there's not a lot of contact, um, you know, that goes on on my boat from a, you know, day to day, uh, you know, point of view. So. Do you find that your clients are wary or do they want to know what's going on and that sort of thing? Or are they just ready to go fish? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, maybe early, early on people were a little concerned, but now it's, let's go. When you open, let's go. I want to go fishing and I want to, you know, get away from people, which obviously the Everglades gives you that uh, great opportunity. But yeah, people just want to get out and uh, tired of being cooped up inside, um, you know, and go fishing. And is it, is it busier or less busier at the ramp? Uh, nobody's, nobody's fishing. It's been really, really quiet. Um, you know, so I know the guides cause this is our prime time. So I know guides and just talking to other guide friends of mine, it, it's been a, it's been a huge hit on everybody. So, um, the, probably the only thing that hasn't been a hit on is a, is a fishery, which is obviously a good thing. If there is a good thing in this whole situation. And how has it been when you have gotten out? Uh, fishing is good. It's been really good. You know, right when they opened up some areas um, down in Flamingo that we can access, because the Everglades, the, the waterway has always, it's never closed down. So you could access it if you were outside of Dade County, Broward County, which you can access it over on the West Coast, over in Chukaluski and Everglades City. Um, you know, so people were fishing the Everglades, but being able to get to areas from Flamingo when it opened up, um, you know, 
it was the first few few days felt like it was you know you're in Nirvana. The fishing was great. There's a lot of fish around. They were they weren't spooky. They're real bitey, and uh, you know, so it's been that 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 has been a good thing on the whole situation. Awesome, um, Scott. Wh- what did you do with yourself through May if you didn't fish? I listened to some Jeff Labrie stories. And as you know, that can drag out for hours. <laughs> but uh, now, you know, we again, Matt and I talked early on. We, we recognized that this was going to slow us down a bit uh, in May. Normally, we'd be, we'd be uh, full tilt right now. Um, we decided that, you know what, we'll, let's just make hay. Uh, we had a lot of work that needed to be done around the camps and obviously the little setback last week made some more work for us, but you know, overall, uh, we're going into the season. We're going to open up on uh, Sunday and we probably have got more done ahead of time than we normally would this time of year. Uh, again, the staff here is fantastic. We've got yards cleaned up, cabins are ready to go. Uh, you know, we've had to do some, obviously some additional training and, and discussing on how we're going to stay safe with the PPE and, uh, and, and working with our clients and, uh, and, and amongst the staff. So, you know, there's, there's been a lot to do to get prepared. But uh, the good thing is, is, uh, uh, you know, we've had that time to get prepared. And uh, although we, you know, again, we've lost a few weeks here that we, we could have been making some, some hay. Uh, we're, we're, we're ready to rock and roll and uh, it, everything's going to be good. We just, you know, I think it was uh, uh, Tim down there in the corner. I know there's an advertisement coming up on my screen here. I'm not sure what that is, but somebody down question. in the corner made the <laughs> comment. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, hey, so, a question. Yes, yeah, so, well, this technology so, stuff. I, I've got Matt's friend here helping me through it. So, but, what, uh, what are you know, some of the our phone's some been of the ringing off the hook as well? We're surprised. What are some of the precautions you're taking? Well, you know, about? we've uh, sure, sure. Well, obviously, the places are are going to be sanitized. Uh, our dining hall is big enough; we can separate people if they they wish to be separated. Uh, when groups come in, uh, amongst themselves, we can keep them at a table. You get another group, you got to separate them out a little bit and, and, uh, get some distancing in place. We are prepared for those that are concerned. We can actually serve meals right out into their individual cabins. Uh, sort of like, uh, Libby camps drive, drive, drive-in service takeout. But, uh, you know, obviously we really want to keep that camaraderie going. There's so much to these lodges when people at the end of the day get to socialize and, and talk about their fishing mm-hmm. stories and have their cocktail. And, and a lot of that, again, is going to, uh, is going to, to be incumbent on them to, to h- how tight do you want to be with your comrades uh, throughout the camp. And we're going to make sure that the accommodations are there to help people to do whatever it is that makes them comfortable. Communication is a big part of that, obviously. The guides are, are prepared. Uh, you know, we all have personal protective equipment available to us. Lots of sanitizing going on in place. Probably one of the biggest challenges we're going to have is we're operating out of 20-foot canoes with two people, as you know, Phil. And, uh, you know, you put two people in a canoe and a guide sitting right behind. There's a couple of them that are going to be pretty tight there for a bit. Um, we're not quite sure how, how we're going to take care of all of that yet, but, uh, you know, it is a 20 foot canoe. You divide that up by six feet, you can make it happen, but, uh, we got some work to do, uh, but we're ready to go and, uh, ready to keep people safe and keep each other safe. How are you handling lunches? Lunches, uh, you know, we've, we've got the kitchen staff that can have stuff prepared, uh, ready for people if they want to put their own lunches together. Uh, the kitchen staff is going to be prepared to make the lunches. Uh, the guides will probably not be handling the lunches. Things will be prepared and, and handed off to the, the crew or, or to the guests. Uh, they can take those out. As you know, generally, the guides take care of all of that. We don't want to put a burden. Obviously, we can't have every uh, every guest coming through the kitchen making their own lunches. But again, the kitchen staff is going to be prepared to do that in a in a safe manner. Put things together. The uh, the guides will not be handling the lunches uh, as we move forward. And uh, again, a lot of this is really going to be playing it by ear. See how things progress. 
Uh, you know, up in this neck of the woods, we're certainly not seeing the issues that, that some of the folks are in other more populous areas, but that doesn't doesn't change the fact we've still got to be careful and pay attention to the guidelines. And, uh, and we're prepared to do that. Our standards here have to follow pretty much the same thing as the restaurants as far as our food service and preparation goes. Uh, as far as the guiding goes, there's probably a little bit more flexibility. Uh, throwing people in the airplane, flying them out. Uh, you know, we've, we have to follow the same guidelines as any other commercial uh, flying operation, which, you know, you can all jump on an airplane and come to Maine right now and sit right side by side with somebody. Uh, that said, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to have personal protective equipment for people available and, uh, do the best we can try and stay within the guidelines. Right. Uh, Wade, my friend, we certainly don't, we go ahead. Yeah, what we don't want to do is is water it down so bad that they lose the experience. You know, right. I, we feel there's there's uh, enough that we can keep people safe and still give them that experience that that we we want to give them. You know, it, it, come up here and sit in your camp by yourself with your face mask on and a handful of sanitizer, and then go out and go fishing by yourself. That's not the experience we want people to have here. We want them to have that experience of Libby camps to be able to jump in that airplane, fly to a remote location, have their guide show them some fantastic fishing and, uh, you know, come back and have a great home cooked meal and a cocktail with their comrades and enjoy the full day. It's a, it's a whole experience as you know, Phil. And uh, we're gonna do our best to make that happen while trying to keep people safe. Um, Wade, uh, my friend Todd Tanner, who you may know, uh, has I a question. Know, has a question about whether there's any protocol in place for learning that a guest has tested positive. Yeah, we, so, um, my father and I sat down with our chef and our sous chef and our, our, um, kitchen server and a guide yesterday who actually, uh, in addition to guiding for us, owns a restaurant and he's been open under the phase one guidelines and is preparing for phase two. Um, we also met with the head of uh, hospital clinic network in Montana the other day and asked some of these questions, namely, what what are the airports doing? The National Guard is um, in place at the Bozeman Airport, the Butte Airport, the Missoula Airport they're authorized to screen uh, temperatures. So then what is being done if there's a symptomatic um, passenger that comes off a plane? And the answer is that person is strongly encouraged to go get medical attention. And um, that was alarming for us to learn that that was the extent of the National Guard's abilities there. So it, it really does put on us the need to create that protocol. What do we do if you become symptomatic day three at your stay at Big Hole Lodge? And we also are all out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and the protocol we've developed is, luckily, Butte has the ability to test everyone right now. Uh, if you walk into wow. the, the, the clinic in Butte, you can get a test, whether you're symptomatic or not. Um, it's a five to seven day test, so that poses an issue. But for symptomatic folks, there there's a 24 to 48 hour test. So our protocol is we find someone symptomatic, hopefully they have a rental car. Um, we're asking a lot of folks that do fly to rent a car and drive to the boat ramp. Um, but we all go in. The clients that are at the lodge go in, the, the staff goes in and we postpone a day or two of fishing to determine um, if this is COVID. And if it's COVID, then Big Hole Lodge has decided to shut down and quarantine the staff for 14 days. Wow. We're really hoping this doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But, but most of my clients, if not all of my clients, are over 65. And this thing affects 20-year-olds and 32-year-olds like myself. And... Um, my dad's 73 and was exposed to Agent Orange and has had pneumonia three times in his life. And I really, really don't want him or any of our clients getting it and sure don't want our staff getting it. So um, 
we're going to ask our clients if we can take their temperature prior to them leaving home. And my plan is to, to screen everyone's temp uh, in the morning before we bring them breakfast in their rooms. We're serving breakfast in the cabins. Dinners uh, will be at two large tables up the lodge. But again, we take eight to 10 clients. So social distancing is easier with two large tables. Um, and then part of what the county is requiring us to do are, are temperature screenings for each employee before each shift. And then a checklist of of symptoms and I'm going to send a survey monkey to each client uh, two weeks prior to their arrival and ask them for their safety, our safety in the community of Wise River to be really honest with any of the symptom checklist in that survey monkey and we'll roll their their booking over 100% value to a, a safer time to come fishing. Right. Wow. That's, that's a pretty robust system. Um, Justin, uh, Warren wants to know, do you have international clients? And if so, how are you dealing with that? Right. We don't, we had some this year, you know, international flight right now is so challenging. We are gladly, uh, referring, um, um, refunding their money. If they like, you know, we have some 80, 80 year old guys from England coming out this year. They called and canceled. We refunded their money. No questions about it. Um, International travel is going to be hard this year. And we just, the ones that we had have uh, canceled until next year from the inter, from the international folks. But we're still seeing a lot of domestic stuff. You know, and I'd, and I'd be happy to, if I could, just touch on my conservation hawk buddies' uh, question earlier about uh, COVID. You know, I put out there in our protocol that we would test uh, temp of the people when they came to the lodge. Man, we got some serious, honestly, we took $40,000 in cancellations the day after I put the protocols out. People said, that's a HIPAA violation. If you want my temperature and I, t I have a toothache, I'm gonna score a high temperature and you're asking me to now, how am I gonna get to Idaho Falls 50 miles from here? And we got a lot of HIPAA concerns there. So we pulled back on that and we haven't received our infrared thermometers yet, but I still have them ordered. They're supposed to come sometime this year. But what we've said, what we've offered is that those will the staff will not be temping our guests we are not doctors we do not diagnose problems but the temperature the thermometer is going to be there and i want guys to use it and have fun with it somebody tempt me Ooh, tanner you know or mike you were 99.6 yesterday today you're 99.7 maybe they caught a big fish we want to make that fun and jovial and if somebody uh thinks they have symptoms perhaps beyond a higher a high temperature, which again could be due to any number of things that are not related to COVID. Uh, I would talk, if I hear somebody coughing, I might just kind of casually on the side, just ask them if they're okay. It's very difficult to ask somebody if they've been diagnosed with COVID. We are relying on our clientele to be honest and sensitive to others. We believe 99% of the people, if they had COVID, would probably cancel or push to later in the year when hopefully they're, they've not, they're not symptomatic. Listen, you guys, we understand that the asymptomatic side of this, and we came to a conclusion that we can either shut down until this thing passes, or we can try. So we decided to try, and indeed, we're concerned. I'll be honest, we're concerned. If, if I get sick or my chef gets COVID, we will have to shut down this place for two. There's going to be contact tracing. It's going to be ugly. Our fingers are crossed that our guests understand the sensitivity of travel and being around other people. We feel that the guests that are booking right now understand there is a reasonable amount of risk traveling to get here and being here. There's a reasonable amount of risk going to everywhere. So we've trying to mitigate that reasonably and uh, strongly suggesting people wear buffs in the car with the guides, but we're not requiring it. <clears throat> Wish us luck. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a it's a difficult situation for, for everybody. And, and there are, the privacy issue is certainly very real. Um, you all want to make sure you protect yourselves and the people who work for you. Um, yeah. 
our next question is from uh, Mark. And uh, any of you can jump in on this one. Do you have club cli clubs that come every year? And if so, how are they doing it? Do you have group trips of people who aren't related? We do. We have a, a women's group that is typically 12 and they've cut down to 10 uh, this year, but they're kind of in a wait and see scenario um, as we all are. And our, our first, we opened June 21st and our first big group is a Flycasters club out of California and they're, they've dropped from 12 down to six. Um, and those six are watching how Montana reopens. Montana opens June 1st and us opening three weeks after that gives everyone a chance to look at cases. So um, there's not a guarantee we're going to open for our season yet, but I'm hopeful that this thing stays down and, and we open with gusto and uh, the phone starts ringing here. But those are our two groups. And I would just to answer your question, they've, they've cut down the folks that are in the higher risk category aren't going to come with the group this year. And um, we haven't changed the scenario with their booking or, or pricing or any of that. And I've put everyone on a 2021 calendar anyhow, so they have a spot next year. Yeah, I would echo the same thing. Wade so just we've got, oh, go, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. No, no worries. Yep. Yeah, Phil, we, we've got some groups, as you know. We've got a, a group from a uh, plastic extrusion company that, that comes here in the spring. Actually, they come several times a year. And, uh, you know, they bring some of their senior staff. Occasionally, they'll bring some of their senior clients uh, that they, they have. And uh, this year, part of their booking procedure is, uh, you know, they're, they're keeping people grouped together that uh, are, are traveling together, that sort of thing. And uh, we actually have the camps pretty exclusively for that group while they're here. Uh, we've had the conversations. Uh, I think the communication is the biggest part of it. So we can make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to accommodate them. But, you know, they're, they're coming here also recognizing the, the, the potential risks, obviously, but also recognizing that uh, they still want to have that experience. So, they're uh, they're they're coming here prepared to work with us, and uh, we'll make accommodations in the dining hall. Uh, uh, we've we've changed some of the accommodations as far as the individual camps go, and how we're going to house individual groups uh, or subgroups of that 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 bunch. But uh, yeah, I mean, having the conversations is the big part of it, and then making it happen afterwards. Justin. Yeah, I might just echo the same thing uh, both the guys just said, Scott and Wade. You know, we've got uh, some corporate groups coming out, 20 people. They're now 15 people. We've got uh, some larger families. They're still coming. Family groups seem to be comfortable. Uh, uh, but we are seeing some of our 20-plus groups and our 15 numbers. They're weeding out a little bit. But that's in July and August, and, and we're, we seem to be selling some of those dates right now. So we're feeling all right. Jason, are you seeing your late summer dates holding steady? Um, yeah, so uh, late summer for us down here is our slowest time of year. Um, so, you know, end of July, August, September is definitely the slowest three months, four months of our season. Uh, we don't start get rolling again until October. But the good thing, you know, like we were I was talking about earlier, is that our spring is our busiest time. I've moved a lot of – I've been lucky enough to move a lot of those guys to um, to that time of year. Um, you know, unfortunately, some I, you know, some I couldn't, but a lot of the uh, – you know, a lot of my guests that they just, they just need to fish, they need to get that in for their year, uh, I've pushed them back to that time of year. So that's that's been, you know, pretty good. Um, Todd Tanner's back with another question. He's full of them. Um, oh, wait, nope. Ted Putnam I was looking for. You guys might know Ted. Ted is the owner of Hawk Lake Lodge in uh, Northern Ontario. And his question is sort of about liability. Do you guys have concerns about liability for your businesses? 
Yeah, I, if you want, I can go ahead and just, uh, we looked into this. Here's the problem with liability in COVID. How are you gonna prove where you caught it? How are you gonna prove Good where you point. caught it? Um, yes, exactly. And in that line, um, if someone goes after a worst case scenario, wrong for wrongful death suit, the airline, the rental car company, the lodge could be named. So I think from our standpoint, being really, really pedantic about how we um, communicate, as you said earlier, Justin, and then document what we're doing, when we're doing it, uh, if testing available, get your employees tested, um, your staff, your your guides, make sure everybody's communicating that they don't have symptoms. But um, Ted, the short answer is this is all just starting into litigation. Um, a lot of big insurance companies are touting their virus exemption clauses and those may or may not hold up. There, there's a lot of insurance law that would say um, those, those aren't legal exemption clauses and there should be some, some coverage for uh, businesses that are sued under this. But it, it, like Justin says, it's, it's a brave new world of litigation that's just getting going. And we should let people know, Wade, that you are in fact a lawyer, correct? <laughs> I went to the University of Montana School of Law, but I chose fly fishing. <laughs> good man. <laughs> Um, really good call. <laughs> so, I mean, I we're we're getting close to time here. So, let's just go around the horn, starting with Jason. And I, I just want to give you each the opportunity to say, you know, what should people know and what should people expect about fly fishing with you in the summer of 2020? Jason, you want to start us off? Yeah, so like uh, like we t talked about earlier, things are opening up down here. Um, hotels are open. Uh, restaurants are starting to open. Um, you know, the summer months, I tell people all the time, the summer months are some of the best tarpon fishing that we have all year round. So that is an absolute bonus with not a lot of people on the water. Um, you know, so th that's what you come to. You can expect great fishing. Um, I know, like I was saying earlier, the keys are opening up in June. So that I know guys are excited about that. The restaurants are going to be open down there. Hotels are going to be open places for people to stay, you know, hopefully, uh, the heat, I don't know. Hopefully it kind of burns off the virus. So we got our fingers <laughs> crossed. Don't know if that's true or if that's going to happen, but that's kind of what we're uh, thinking. So that's what you can expect down here for sure. Excellent. Scott. Scott, what do you think people need to know about coming to visit you for the summer? You know, we we understand it's a little bit different time than what we're used. Uh-oh. Yeah. We're, you know what? We're going to do everything we can to give you the same experience that you would have had if you had come here a year ago or a year from now. Uh, we're going to do what we can to, to mitigate the circumstances, but... Uh, you know, if you water it down too much, you might as well sit at home and watch it on TV. And uh, we're going to do our best to, to make it a great experience and try and keep you safe when you come here. Have a good time. Enjoy the camaraderie of your fellow fishermen and the staff and the guides. And uh, we'll, we'll give it 100%. We'll see where it takes us. It's a, As everybody said, it's a new normal for us. I'm not sure I really like that click, but uh, we're going to make it all happen. Awesome. Wade, um, we're really excited. Montana, Idaho, Maine, the Everglades, these are places to go be socially distanced and enjoy some time out of your apartment and your house and cities. And this is the right thing to be doing. Um, and as long as everyone in this country and uh, when international travel is, is allowed again, uh, keeps themselves safe and and stays clean and we can all make it until a vaccine um fly fishing is is the thing to be doing with your summer 
So we're asking as many of our clients to drive um, that, that as, as can, and those that fly just stay super safe, wear a mask through the planes and get through that gauntlet of airports and uh, get out here and we're gonna be cleaner and safer than, than we've ever been. So looking forward to a great season. Awesome. Great, 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 great. You know, I'll just say our, our business model here, our mantra, our mission statement is to provide an experience that's great enough for our guests that they want to come back and bring family, friends, coworkers with them. So we're trying to provide that experience based on our conversation when we first see them. And like I say, we're malleable. Um, it's a lot of optics. It's showing them what they are, what, what they want to see. And uh, it's been so far so good. I will share this with you guys. We have seen our gratuities. Um, they've been excellent. We have seen spent, we have a captain's list, for example, of uh, we offer complimentary beverages here, but I have a captain's list of nice wines, 100, 100 to $300 bottles. We're selling those every night. There is an urge, there is a need for people to offer the experience that we do. And for 10 more seconds, I want to share with you, I'm a second generation hospitality guy. My family started restaurants in the Minneapolis area. And I'm really flattered to be on the screen with Wade and Scott and Jason uh, being a manager for 11 years. I know the three of you guys, and of course you, Phil, of uh, ultimate professional, run very good operations. And, and you have done so for a long time. I'm flattered to be in your presence and I aspire to be as good as all three of you other guys. But re remember this, friends. Our industry has been around since before biblical times, right? Hospitality, the need for somebody to sleep, eat, and drink has been around for forever. What we offer people will be in demand soon, I hope. It has survived pandemics in the past, wars, floods, natural disasters. If we can just hang in there, I think what we offer, all three of us and, and our family of Orvis Lodges, outfitters and guides as as tim linehan once says i consider you all brothers and we have an amazing experience to offer people right now that gets the 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 uh, gives them a break from the stresses they're going on in their life their businesses their families i don't sleep well at night right now i'm i'm nervous too but when i come here and i see our guests and the joy that they're having and the relief they're feeling, you can just see the weight lifted off their shoulders. I'm sure you're going to experience this, guys, in these coming weeks when you open up. Your staff, once you get the ball rolling, should start to relax a little bit. That vibe is transferred right to the guest experience. And they're just grateful to have the opportunity. Hang in there. We're going to get through this together. Awesome. And, you know, I went to my first Orvis Guide rendezvous long before I worked for Orvis. And uh, that was the first place I was sort of exposed to what's known in the, in the Orvis world as E-Log, Endorsed Lodges, Outfitters, and Guides. And I think the, the four gentlemen on the screen with me today represent that everybody in the Orvis E-Log community is doing thoughtful, important work to make sure that they can get this season back on track after something that's disrupted every part of our lives. So uh, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining me in this Facebook Live and for sharing very honestly your concerns and the challenges and how you're meeting them. Uh, I think it's super impressive. And uh, I hope folks recognize that even in these tough times, there are opportunities to get out there and, and really make the most of these incredible opportunities. So uh, thank you all so much and good luck on thank your you. 2020 season. Thank you. Appreciate Take it. Care. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us, Phil. Take thank care. Thank you, Phil. Take Thanks care. See you soon. Good luck, gentlemen. Good luck, Cheers. guys.